Okay, so um, so here we uh, are just going to take a look at a couple of quick ideas. Some of which, uh, you know, you probably could figure out before we had um, uh, our, our little chat today. So the first one here, say you had 64 people in a tennis tournament, how many matches must be played before we have a winner? So, question, Anthony? No, I figured, no, I figured it out. Oh, you did. Okay, so how many is there? 63. 63 matches? Um, have you played tennis before? Have you played tennis before? So a match is not the same thing as a game? Well, every time you, you're eliminated, you end up with half as many players. So yeah. you have 64 players so to wait, start. Half, okay, is match different from a game? Uh, no, a match and a game are the same. But uh, every time they play, the winner advances. Yes, but at the bottom we have 64 players and therefore 32 matches. Uh, you're, it's not quite 32 matches. Uh, let, me, let me show you what happens in the tennis tournament, okay? So if we start with 64 players, then the 32 winners advance. Okay, then from those 32, 16 winners advance, 8 winners advance, 4, 2, and finally the tournament winner. Okay? So here's one thing that we could do, right? I mean, obviously this is a simple enough example that you can do the numbers, um, but if we had a huge number of people, we'd probably want to do a bit of math on it. So all I want to do to, is illustrate to you, first of all, that this is um, terms in a sequence. And what we're going to do is, if you think about it, this is a match. To get from 64 to 32, one match happened, right? Um, well, I shouldn't say... Oh, I see what you're saying, Anthony. Uh, yeah, you're, you're actually... You're correct. Um, now I know what you're talking about. Now it makes sense. You're actually correct also, but we're thinking of a different term. So you were correct. My apologies. Um, but... Uh, why don't we say rounds? Would that make more sense? How many rounds in a tournament? Is there a difference? I think a round is like the you know, semi-final, quarter-final, final. Oh. Yeah, so why don't we call it rounds then and maybe that'll... Yeah, otherwise, you, I'll explain to you if you didn't catch what Anthony uh, had caught. But um, So each one of these would represent one of those rounds as we advanced, and you can see that if there were seven terms, there's actually only six rounds of tennis that were played. So um, the, the number of rounds is one less than the number of terms. So if you have to figure out, you know, how many rounds of tennis or whatever it was, was played, then um, that are. If this number was larger or more complicated, or maybe the tournament doesn't, maybe it's like two-thirds of the winners advance, or I don't know exactly how the tournament would go out, but let's say you needed to do this. We could set it up properly now to say, when does 1 equal 64 to the 1 half n minus 1? We're basically asking where the term formula would do this. So 1 out of 64 would have to be 1 half to the n minus 1. And if we solve that little exponential equation, we would end up with um, seven terms. Okay. So you can count them here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. But then the number of rounds is one less. So there was six rounds. Okay. So what Anthony noticed was that if 64 people were here, there would have been 32 games that were played or matches and then 16 matches to get to the next one, and then eight matches, four, two, and one, which if you added them up was 63. So that's correct, just a little bit of a terminology barrier there. Yeah, it's always the terminology that kicks me up. Mm. Okay, um, so I'll let you try the next one, think about... Uh, okay, is it recording? Uh, today we're recording, yeah. Oh. So let's look at the next one here. If you were, If you ask for a salary of one cent from your employer every week on the condition that it doubles, what would your annual salary be? Uh, yes, I had, some, had a number of questions. What do you start with the one cent? Oh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. You How many can, weeks are there in a year? 52. Okay. 52, 52 and weeks. And what was the next one? Doesn't it carry on into the next year, or does it repeat? Well, let's just say this is like a dream job that you only get for one year. But it doesn't matter. The question is, um, what would your annual salary be? In so the just first year? In the first year, yeah. Okay. So... Fair enough.
pretty much would make you the richest person on earth by a long shot. Huh? Where does 4.5 come from? Times 10 to the 13? Yeah. Um, well, this is, is this the same sum that you calculated? Starts at oh. a penny and doubles. So I believe that's, uh, that, I think it's either four and a half trillion or 45 trillion, but needless to say. Yeah, still leave, still leaves me kind of short. Uh, did you calculate the terms? Yeah, I calculated it as though the A was equal to one, as in one cent. Oh, uh, okay. So then yours would be divided by 100, right? Okay. So... There are a few other like uh, application style questions that I'm sure you'll be able to work out. Uh, we're going to practice a couple of you know styles of questions. The first is what I call a diminishing resource problem. So I've seen this with like uh, water wells, oil wells. You know, it could be a mine, and maybe it's minerals that are being extracted. Um, but the idea is that uh, it's actually this is actually roughly what happens in in the real world. If you picture like an oil well, and I know that my artwork is terrible, but you can bear with me here. So let's just say this is the oil well that's in the ground, and uh, you know there's there's all this earth over top of it, and they end up drilling into it to get to the oil, right? So that earth is putting a lot of pressure on the. I know it looks terrible, but um, <laughs> that earth is putting a lot of pressure on the oil, and that's why when they drill into it, it shoots up out of the out of the um, the drill hole, right? It just comes squirting out like you see on the movies, right? Um, so what happens though is as that uh, well starts to diminish and you end up losing the oil, the pressure goes down as well. So less pressure means less oil is coming out of the well. So when they do these productions, if you were to graph what their production looks like, um, it actually looks kind of like this. It starts off, they think they're rich, they got so much oil, but then it quickly goes like this and drops off. So they kind of have to figure out, at what point would we say, close up the well, it's not worth pumping any more oil out of this thing. So, you know, they have to, fit. they maybe figure out, oh, we got one to two years here, and then we move it on to another spot in the oil field. But um, anyways, it, it is fairly accurate as far as I'm told, is what these models look like. So let's, uh, let's kind of take a look and see how this, these problems turn out. So if you get 10,000 barrels of oil in your first month, um, and each month your production is reduced by 10%, what is the total amount of barrels you'll get after five years of production? Okay, I'll let you see if you can work this one out. Okay, so the uh, first term here is 10,000, and over five years you're going to end up with 60 months of production. So your common ratio here... If it's reduced by 10%, then what do you think it's going to look like for its common ratio? 0.9. Yeah, 0.9. It's going to have 90% left. So that means if we're looking for the sum of 60, it's going to be 10,000. 1 minus 0 0.9 to the 60 over 1 minus 0 0.9. So we have... Uh, about 99,820 uh, barrels of oil. Do a barrel roll. So, let's take a look at another one. This time I want you to think about what these, uh, the question is not actually a difficult one, but you have to think about what you're being asked to do a little harder. So it says an oil well produces 15,000 liters of oil on its first day. Each day the production decreases by 5%. So what's the total volume of oil that the well will produce? So you think about it, I'm starting off with 15,000, and then 5% a day it decreases. If I kept adding and adding and adding, then I could figure out how much oil was produced by this well. Okay? If you can figure out this part of it, that's, that's great. See if you can figure out how much is left in that oil well after 100 days. So not how much has been pumped out, how much is still in the ground. Okay, does anyone have any, uh, what, what is it asking for us to do here in the first part? Any, any ideas on how we could figure out the total volume of oil produced? Sure, Anthony. 
infinite series. Yeah, that's right. So this is the idea is if we want to know how much oil is in the well, we turn the pump on and then we walk away and then after an infinite amount of time has gone by, we look in the bucket to see how much is there. We pumped all of it out, we can see how much oil has been pumped out. Yes? Uh, the answer? Okay, so yeah, uh, I'll get it from you in a sec. Let me just, uh, I'll get the number from you. Let me just put up the formula for it. So we would have started with 15,000, 1 minus 0 0.95. So what do we have then? 300,000. 300,000 liters of oil. Okay. So again, if you, if you wanted to know how much oil was in the well, you could do the same thing of asking how much is there if I pumped all of it out. So to pump all of it out, you have to go on forever and ever of pumping and pumping and pumping. Okay. So if we estimate that there's 300,000 liters of oil in the well, how much is left after 100 days? So here's the idea that you uh, should be thinking of, Okay, because we all know that's what an oil well looks like. And here's the oil. So let's say that 100 days has gone by, and after 100 days, that means I've taken up all of this production, okay? So if I know how much 100 days is worth, and I also know how much is in the entire well, I can figure out what's left over. Okay, so, so those are the puzzle pieces. You now know how much is in there how much you can pump out after 100 days, see if you can figure out what's in the bottom of the well after. Okay, so if I uh, figure out what the sum after 100 days is, okay. just a second, uh, where's my calculator? Oh, there we go. You got a number for me? Yeah. Sure, let's hear it. Nearly 300,000. 3 298,223.8412. Okay, so um, after 100 days, most of the oil has been pumped out. We started with 300,000, so that means what's left over is, let's see here, 298,223. Yeah, not much. So the infinite sum, all the oil, minus production after 100 days is going to be equal to 1776.16, which of course is not very much oil to be working on that well. It's probably not worth your cost at that point, right? It won't last 100 days if you're pumping oil out of that well. Well, it will, but you'll be getting production is really small by then. Okay, any questions about uh, the diminishing resource problem? Okay.